All right, folks, we're going to walk through the process of building an OpenStack uh, system on top of two UCS uh, blade servers, UCS B200 uh, blade servers. Um, the intent of this is actually to provide an undercloud or understack for uh, an OpenStack lab environment, uh, but this is useful for many uh, such systems. We're going to use a couple uh, things that are a little different than most OpenStack deployments these days. Um, first off, we are going to deploy controller and compute onto one node. Actually, all the networking services, uh, core services will be there, uh, as well as the Neutron plugins that we have local networking service. Um, we're also going to be using Linux Bridge for our virtual bridging solution. Uh, many people today seem to be using OBS, or at least that's the more common uh, option. Linux Bridge gives us some better flexibility in terms of what we're actually trying to accomplish. And the actual OpenStack installation is going to be driven by um, the CentOS uh, RDO PackStack model, which is a modified Puppet deployment routine that automates most of the services that, that uh, one would want to deploy for an OpenStack environment and ties it together fairly easily. We're going to deploy three networks into our environment. Um, we've already got a service template created, but we'll go look at that service template and look at the interfaces that exist. Uh, effectively, there's an ETH0 interface, which is our management network for our virtual machines um, that lives on our 10.164 network. It turns out that many of these networks overlap in multiple interesting ways, but um, they overlap specifically from the underlay, the understack environment, under cloud environment, uh, and the overlay, what the actual tenants uh, on top of the system would be using. Um, that's going to change over time, but at least right now, that's what this looks like. So ETH0 of our nodes is going to be our management interface, the default interface, default route interface, um, access to internet services, et cetera, will all be through that, through a router. Turns out that the three routers that are on this diagram are the same routers for all the deployment components. Um, but uh, in this case, they're just exposed as different routers in case they might be deployed as different actual physical routers at some point. Um, ETH1 interface is going to be the principal interface for Actually, a couple of different uh, VLANs are going to run over that. Um, in our case, uh, 10164 is going to run over that as well as 10165. And even though addresses uh, look like they're allocated here, that's just implying that the native interface is going to be 10165. Uh, VLAN 64 will be brought forward. As will the VLANs, well, they'll actually be made available, but we're not going to map them in on the ETH1 interface, we'll not map them into the Linux bridge environment. ETH2 is then intended to be uh, basically a trunk inter trunked interface that will provide access to the virtual machines that get spun up for the um, overstack or overcloud uh, OpenStack environment. Uh, and those interfaces are going to then provide a trunked uh, network for VLANs 300 through 64, which are tenant external networks. Um, you'll notice that those networks are also routed. Uh, the idea being that you should be able to get to uh, any of these networks from a jump box that gives us access to this environment. Um, or from the, the overall systems environment. All right, so with that in mind, um, we're going to actually jump into uh, the environment itself. The lab is remote. We have Jumpbox access into the lab. We don't have enough public IP addresses uh, to make everything publicly uh, addressable or accessible, so we jump in, and, and then from there, we have a, a classic 10 dot network environment that we use. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our physical infrastructure set up. Um, and yes, I'm not going to update Java right now, even though probably should for security services um, or purposes, but we're just going to go with it the way, the way it stands. And we'll now launch the application. So for anybody who's used UCS manager, this is a pretty common process, logging in, dealing with all the odd security exceptions. There are ways to address and fix that, but uh, given that this is a lab environment, we don't usually uh, go through the extra trouble to, to do that. Um, as you can see here, we have two fabric interconnects. We have a single chassis. Um, it's complaining about power, uh, always an issue. Um, that, that we tend to have is, is never enough power, never enough power interfaces, um, but the system runs just fine. Uh, within this chassis, we have both uh, VMware and this little OpenStack environment we're going to build. Uh, there's eight machines in the chassis. We're going to use uh, actually servers six and seven, 
And as I mentioned, we already have a service profile created. Uh, I've mapped out uh, an eight node environment of which we're going to build the first two. Um, the other systems are actually in use for uh, another lab uh, running an, an ESX based uh, system. If we actually look at the template that we're using for this, hopefully I picked the right template, um, our compute template uh, is a fairly straightforward, normal, normal template. Um, storage is look, looking to use the local storage, so there's no actual additional uh, fabric interconnect connected storage in this environment. Um, our network is, I think, where it really gets interesting. You see that we have three networks, ETH01 and 2, um, and uh, I believe we can click through to these and we can see that uh, in this case, ETH0 only has VLAN's, uh, VLAN 64 mapped to it and it is native, which was my expectation. Um, ETH1 should have uh, all of the 300 VLANs mapped. Along with 64 and 65, there is nothing that's native. So unlike what I claimed for the diagram, there's actually no native VLAN 65. So we'll actually map uh, a VLAN uh, into the, uh, that interface for our OpenStack bridge um, for access to VLAN 65. Uh, and the other VLANs are available there too. But we also have uh, ETH2, just in case we actually wanted a separate trunked interface for those VLANs. And, uh, Actually, it looks like we didn't even map all of the all of the networks, but we could actually continue to add these networks in. And again, there's no native uh, network here. It's just these are the VLANs that both exist within the Fabric Interconnect and are mapped into our environment. Um, because this is a, a, a an updating template, uh, these updates would apply to the pre-deployed, ser uh, pre-created service profiles or the service profiles that I've created from this template. Um, so this will actually just map all these VLANs into here. And I'm going to leave it at that for right now, uh, since it, we're not going to specifically use that interface a little bit later. Uh, I have to save those changes. And this should be fine, because it's just going to change these service profiles. Um, now our service profiles uh, are, are just these, these eight. Uh, service profiles three through eight are actually un unused at the moment. Uh, they're configured, but there are no servers mapped to them. Uh, we're just using CentOS 1 and 2. Now, I've already allocated servers to these as well. So CentOS 1 is not running, but it's attached to Blade 7. Uh, CentOS 2 is uh, attached to Blade 6. Um, and we can see that through the, through the user interface. So we're going to start one of these guys. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually map a um, uh, an ISO file, uh, an ISO disk file, uh, to these machines so that we can um, so that we can actually install uh, CentOS on them. We're going to do this manually. We actually do have an environment where you can Pixie boot these uh, these systems as well. But for now, this is a, a more common way uh, to do this, especially if you're only going to do this once or twice. Um, this is a fairly manual process, uh, but uh, it's actually not that complicated for the the CentOS. Uh, system space. So we're going to launch the KVM environment. I've already booted the server, um, so I'll restart it as soon as I get the, the actual disk mounted. And yes, again, bypass all the security controls that it says, wait, is this really something that you want to do? Over and over and over again. All right, so it's in the process of boot booting. Um, and actually, the Java is still loading. But as soon as I can get to the virtual media, I want to activate virtual devices. Which again says, you know, are you sure you really want to do this? Um, and once that's been activated, now I can, there we go, map a CD, um, and I'm going to browse for a new disk. And uh, hopefully, here on my computer, disk C, in my ISOs, I have a CentOS. I used to have a CentOS image. All right, well, I'm going to have to pause here and download a CentOS image. Um, so this will take a moment. Uh, we're going to pause the recording and come back to this as soon as we get a chance to download the image. Actually, for completeness, we might just as well go through this process. So I'm going to get a CentOS ISO, uh, CentOS.org. 